Ah, nothing quite like a healthy forest ecosystem. You know, often when talking about forest industry reform, I met with a lot of animosity because people don't know what that looks like. You know, there's a lot of unknowns and fear around the topic because of all the proposed solutions from local mills and reduced harvest are drastically different from the way that we've been doing things, even though in the long run, those things are gonna be better for all of us, not only economically, but ecologically. But today we're in luck because right now I'm at quite possibly the best example of how the future of forests could look here in BC and beyond. Welcome to Wildwood. Check out all this diversity. Killer nurse log, bro. Check out that wildlife tree. Culturally modified Western red cedars. Yes, please. What an absolutely massive Douglas fir. This tree was cut down, but its stump was able to heal because we have a functioning microsial network between all these roots. Are you kidding me? Check out the fire scars on this one. It's been through a lot. Buddy, can you even see the complexity of those crowns up there? 77 acres of pure forest magic, Wildwood was originally acquired by a fellow named Merv Wilkinson back in 1938, and in 1945, he started doing what many landowners did back in the day, log. But Merv did it differently, and refined his practices over the years through what is now known as eco-forestry, and the result is pretty incredible, because despite constant human engagement, this forest is still a healthy, functioning, old-growth forest ecosystem. This whole property features a wide range of tree diversity of both species and ages, as well as all sorts of biodiversity from woodpeckers to migratory birds and insects, while also being actively harvested for timber. And this entire place serves as a prime example of what's possible in the rest of our forests. So the main difference between eco-forestry and normal logging practices really comes down to quality over quantity, and the results are incredible. While modern practices often clear-cut vast swaths of land at once, replant them, and then harvest them again 70 years later, here at Wildwood, harvests are done on five-year cycles in extremely limited quantities that never exceed the annual rate of growth for the area. The bigger, older mother trees are spared as seed trees, and as a result, there's no need to replant forests or use chemical herbicides or pesticides because the forest is allowed to do what it does best, regenerate naturally, creating diverse first resilient ecosystem and producing higher quality timber from species adapted specifically to this land. The timber that is harvested is done so selectively based on the soil, light and density needs of the forest, as well as considerations for market value of each log to ensure maximum value for each cut. And then when the trees do die or fall over in a storm, they're often left here on the ground as coarse woody debris, which is an integral part of a forest ecosystem as it provides habitat not only to animals here but future generations of forest. And when wood is taken from the forest here, it's milled on site locally and used to create high quality timbers that are often used within the local community. While most crop rotation forests and modern logging practices are done on 70 year cycles, this forest here has been operating for just over 75 years and take a look at the difference here. I mean, it looks nothing like the second growth forest that lines so many of our hillsides. What's even more wild is that during those 75 years, this functioning eco forest has been able to generate more revenue in a much more consistent, predictable manner than had Merv just clear cut it all when he first got it and replanted like everybody else was doing. So not only has this project turned a higher profit more consistently without the boom and bust cycles that modern logging is known Known for, but it's maintained a healthy functioning old growth forest ecosystem complete with all sorts of ecological function and biodiversity. I mean, it is quite literally a win-win for everybody. Wildwood serves as a beacon of hope, you know, an example of what's possible if we simply change the way we think about forests and our role in them. By operating with humility and in a manner that never takes more from these ecosystems than they offer in an honorable harvest, we can rehabilitate our forests to encourage more old growth characteristics that serves to increase biodiversity, ecological functioning, and resilience, while also creating stable economy for our local communities and industry. Sure, there would inevitably be some sort of hiccups in bringing a management style such as this to a larger scale, and it would no doubt take many more educated, dedicated, passionate individuals to manage it, but this future is totally feasible and would benefit us all. So moving forward, we need to stop feeding into this fabricated divide between loggers and environmentalists and realize that the thing that is stopping all of us from achieving our needs, whether that be stable jobs and economy or healthy functioning ecosystems, is the system itself. We all need to work together for whole industry reform that breaks up the monopolies and conglomerates who currently control the state of our lands and our futures and creates smaller community woodlots and new harvest structures that gives that power back to the indigenous nations and local communities who depend on these forests not only for their economic well-being, but for our collective ecological health. Change is scary and it's difficult, but it's also the only constant in life. If we can change our minds about the type of world we want to live in and model a future that looks much more like Wildwood, then I believe we can create a truly sustainable forest industry that benefits all of us for generations to come. So let's do it together.